The Skelly Oil Company presents Captain Midnight. Captain Midnight, brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, at the same time, by the Skelly Oil Company, Skelly Jobbers and Dealers. But first, an exciting message for every one of the thousands of new junior pilots in Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. If you've already called at your Skelly service station to join the flight patrol, if you already have your official junior pilot's application card, then listen closely. Your very own burnished bronze medal of membership with the three-blade spinning propeller and the mysterious secret password is now in the mail. If you joined the flight patrol when I first told you about it several days ago, you'll find your medal of membership waiting for you at your Skelly service station within the next few days, maybe tomorrow or the day after. And say, wait till you see your very own medal of membership. Boy, it's a knockout if there ever was one. It's a secret medal, you know. You carry it concealed on your person like a secret serviceman carries his official badge. And you flash it when you're sure you're among friends. Then there's a spinning three-blade propeller on it, too. You spin it to decide hundreds of different things. To pick the winner or the loser in a hundred different games. Why, there's just no end of fun you can have with it. And remember, this spinning propeller medal is your proof that you're a full-fledged member of the new 1940 Flight Patrol. It entitles you to take part in the thrilling adventure that's coming soon. And it entitles you to an unbelievable number of swell free prizes that you'll hear about later on this program. And what's more, none of this will cost you a single penny. You don't even need any box tops or seals or even a penny for a stamp. So listen, if you haven't already driven over to your Skelly service station with mother or dad to join the new 1940 flight patrol, why not do it tonight? Your Skelly man will be happy to give you your official junior pilot's application card right away. And he'll send right in to Skelly headquarters for your very own spinning propeller medal of membership. And he'll put your name on the list for all the gifts and presents that are coming later. And remember, it's all absolutely free. So see your Skelly man and join up tonight. And now to Captain Midnight. In the last adventure, you'll remember that Ivan Shark ordered his chief pilot, Von Gritz, to drop bombs near the lonely cabin sheltering Ma and Patsy Donovan, Pinky Drake, and Slim Pool in order to drive them out into the hands of Pat Rossman waiting outside. Also in the cabin is another of Ivan Shark's henchmen, Pilot Zollinger, who has never uttered a word since he was pulled from the wreck of his plane. It is now almost dark. Pinky and Ma are guarding the wounded pilot Zollinger, while in the opposite corner, Slim and Patsy are talking in low tones. Listen as Patsy asks. What do you think, Slim? All I can say is Captain Midnight and Chuck could have got back here if they could. I've got a queer feeling, Slim. I'm sure something must have happened to them. Oh, come on now, Patsy. Don't be saying that. Captain Midnight and Chuck have been in lots tighter spots than this. You must be forgetting about when this Ivan Shark had him in the rear compartment of that there flying machine he is. I'll never forget it. That was the narrowest escape I ever heard of. If that had been Pinky and me, our goose sure would have been cooked. I still can't figure out how they got out of that there tight spot. Oh, gosh, Lynn, didn't you ever hear about that? Just knew it happened, that's all. Well, you know, that rear compartment of Ivan Shark's airplane had a trap door in the floor. Yeah? In fact, the whole floor was nothing but a big door, which was hinged at the side so they would drop down from the middle. Great grizzly. How high up was it? Over 15,000 feet. And just before Ivan Shark sprung the trap, Chuck found a secret panel which opened into the tail section of the ship. In this way, Chuck and Captain Midnight Boil Shark. Then they sneaked up to the front and overpowered Ivan Shark and his daughter, Fury. And after all that, you're worried about him now. I'm sure I am, Slim. Did you ever hear about the law of averages? No, I reckon not. Well, I mean, it's too much to expect that Captain Midnight is always going to get out of these scrapes. Come on now, Patsy. Keep your chin up. You sure do like Captain Midnight a heat, don't you? Well, I'll say I do. You know, Slim, well, my dad died a long time ago, and since we've all been together on this vacation in Mexico... I've gotten to know Red awfully well. Sort of like a second father to you, huh? Yes, Slim. That's about it. Well, now, looky here. You ain't got no reason to think anything happened to him. Well, it's almost dark, Slim. And it was early afternoon when they left. And you know perfectly well they didn't have gas enough to stay up all this time. Sure, Patsy, but that don't prove nothing. They could have landed somewhere. That's just what I'm afraid of. They had to land somewhere. If they don't get here pretty soon, these fellas around us will start shooting again. No, oh, they won't, neither. Not after the dose of lead Dinky and me give them. You notice they ain't fired a shot for the last hour. Yeah, that's true. But what will happen after it gets dark? 
They could get up real close and we wouldn't see them. Well, we'll start worrying about that when the time comes. They could set fire to the outside of the cabin just as they did to Major Steele and Bud Conley. Now, looky here, Patsy. We ain't going to let them do nothing like that. Not while Pinky and me can still lift the gun. Listen, it's a plane. I'm sure of it. Glory, Pinky, hit that. Yeah, there. Now I can hear it, too. It's Captain Midnight. It must be. Now, look out that crack, Patsy. Maybe you can see the plane. Okay, Slim. I'll take a look. Miss Donovan, how is that pilot doing that we pulled out of the wreck? Did he talk yet? Not yet, but he sure knows what's going on. He's a playing possum, and I'm darn sure of it. Hey, the sky. Captain Midnight wouldn't be dying like that if he was on the land, would he? Darned if I know. Can you see him, Patsy? Yes, he's not the pilot. He's not the pilot. He's not the pilot. Jumping zebra. Looked like a bomb, but it didn't go off. It must be a warning. A real one would have exploded. I think we'd better be getting out of here. That fellow might be back. Look, Ma, why don't you go back there and see how Pinky and that pilot are getting along? Yeah, maybe the excitement will start him talking. I'll be right back. Listen, Slim, I didn't want to scare Ma, but I'm sure that pilot is warning us to get out of this cabin. Before it's too late. I think probably you're right, Patsy. Even if there are men outside, we'll have to take our chances. Perhaps they think Captain Midnight is here, too, and they're getting desperate. I guess you might be right, Patsy. I think I hear that somewhere again. Yes. He's either off to one side or up pretty high. And uh, maybe Pinky and me better go outside, and if he starts diving again, we'll take a shot at him. And while you're doing that, those fellas on the ground outside this cabin might get you. Well, just the same. It looks like the only thing to do. Things sure do look mighty tough. I can see exactly what's happened. These men surrounding us haven't been able to get us off, so Ivan Shock has sent one of his pilots to scare us out of here. Here comes Ma back again. Sure, and I'm not the only one who's scared. No, so Pinky is too, huh? What, him scared? Why, he hasn't even winked an eye. You mean that pilot is scared? Sure, and I ain't talking about anybody else. Why, he's scared not to death. How can you tell? By looking at his eyes. I've looked into people's eyes before who were scared to death and just can't fool me. Yeah, I guess he must know who's up there. The plane's coming back again. Slim, we've just got to get out of here and run for it. Ma, get Pinky and that pilot right away. Hurry. All right, Patsy. Pinky, get that pilot out of here quick. Yeah, Patsy, uh, you speaking of that pilot gives me a great idea. What do you mean, Slim? Uh, he's going to save us even if he can't talk. Well, he won't want to save us. But he's still our prisoner, and it's a sense he's connected with these other fellas. They wouldn't shoot a pal of theirs, so we'll use him as a shield and walk him out in front of us as we leave this cabin, see? Well, that's a swell idea, Slim. Funny we didn't think of it before. We didn't need to think of it until this fellow that's diving around up there started dropping hints to get out of here. Come on, Pinky, let's get it going. Here we are. I had to pop this fellow up to his feet with my gun. Now, get along there, you. I bet this fellow wishes he's to talk now, all right. I'll open the door. We're going to use this pilot as a shield, Pinky. A good idea, Patsy. I'll keep him covered with my gun, and Slim can cover the rear. Well, let's go. That fellow will be back any second. Okay, Patsy, open the door. Now, there you. We mean business. My partner's got his finger on the trigger every second. You're going to lead us out of here, and if you so much as make one false move, you'll be a dead duck quicker than you can say jackrabbit, if you know how to talk at all. Sammy, now march. The door's open. That fellow is coming back. with the safe preserver. Mrs. Donovan, you follow me. Then Patsy's. Then Slim will bring up the rear. All right, let's go. Let's hurry. That's what we can. That fellow will be dying in a minute. Then he lives. Yeah, yeah, that's not so bad, sir. You, can you keep up all right, Miss Donovan? Oh, it's this one case. I wish I had wings. Oh, you're doing fine, huh? Come on. Come on. Did you hear that? Well, that was pretty far off yet. We're safe now anyway. He's not trying for us. He's aiming for the cabin. Yeah, he's still a coming. Well, let him come. If he gets close enough, we'll let him have it. We've brought down one shark's plane once before. Um, yeah, I guess we can slow down a little now, Pinky. Uh, are you sure? Absolutely, Ma. He's banging and turning before coming back. We're far enough in the cabin, so we're all right, even if he does hit it. Keep that fellow in line, Pinky. No, don't you worry, Slim. I got this fellow under control. I'm uh, heading over this way because I think we can get some protection over there among them rocks. Uh, did you see anybody around? There you are, Pinky. If anybody's watching us, they're keeping ahead. They don't dare do anything to us, or they might hurt one of their own men. I'm sure glad we captured him. He makes a swell prize. Well, I'm still wishing I was back in Glass Gulch. Here comes 
that fellow again. He's got him straight for the cabin. Come on, let's get even further away. Ma Donovan, Patsy, and the others reached safety in the nick of time. Luckily, they discovered a cave which afforded them good shelter. We now find them there some time later. The wind is whistling through the trees, as Patsy says. What time is it now, Slim? About quarter to twelve. Oh, I thought Pinky would be back by this time. Yeah, he'll be here pretty quick. I ain't worrying none about him. We were sure lucky to find this cave. And that pilot's been playing possum all the time. I hope Ma doesn't go to sleep while she's watching him. She won't. She's sitting there with that gun right in her lap. Well, I guess Pinky was wrong about seeing two fellas go near the cabin. He must have been wrong, or else it wasn't Captain Midnight and Chuck. Because we sure didn't get no answer when you hooted like an owl, Patsy. Well, that was way back in grammar school when we did that. Chuck is probably forgotten. Here comes Pinky now. I wonder if he found out anything. There is somebody down there, Patsy. Are you sure, Pinky? You bet I am. There's two of them. And they're under a big tree down the hill ways. Try to add the hoot again, Patsy. All right. Here goes. I guess it ain't Chuck or Captain Midnight. A chump would answer. Suppose you try it once more, Patsy. All right. This is the last time. If there's no answer this time, it can't be Chuck. Here goes. No wonder the mournful screech of the owl had a familiar sound to Chuck. But under the tense strain of the moment, will he remember? Future events, human lives, depend upon what happens in the next few minutes. Don't fail to tune in tomorrow to Captain Midnight. And now remember, if you haven't already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol, be sure to join this very night. Remember, this is a different kind of secret club than any you've ever belonged to. There's real adventure ahead for every member. Wonderful free gifts and presents, too. And the most surprising part of it all is that it doesn't cost you a single penny. You just stop at your Skelly service station next time you're out in your family car, tell your Skelly man that you want to join the new 1940 flight patrol and get that marvelous spinning propeller medal of membership. He'll give you your official junior pilot's application card right away and send right in to Skelly headquarters for your spinning propeller medal so you'll have it within a few days. Remember, it's all absolutely free. So don't delay. Join up at your Skelly service station tonight. And don't forget to tune in again tomorrow, same time, same station, for further transcribed adventures of Captain Midnight, brought to you by the Skelly Oil Company, Skelly Jobbers and Dealers. Can Patsy and her party still escape from the clutches of Ivan Shark's men? Will Patsy's signal, resembling the hoot of an owl, be heard by friends or enemies? Be sure to listen tomorrow. Until then, this is Don Gordon, your skelly man, saying goodbye and happy landing! Oh, my God.